Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Major Down Low! It's been a while, but we're here to feed your appetite of donut knowledge by giving you a big old portion of team info and a little scrumptious player bio dessert. So get your rat traps ready and watch those racks, because it's time for Team Alliance! People typically call Alliance the Rat Dota team, but the truth is that they are a completely different animal. This fierce team was created by none other than Eternal Envy way back in 2012 under the name of No Tide Hunter. Envy, who was looking to make a name for himself after becoming a pro player, brought together some of the biggest rising talent in the scene. Players such as the Unstoppable Farming Black, the Incredible Mid S4, and the Offlaner Bulldog. Tidehunter experienced incredible success after placing top three in six tournaments after being founded, and eventually added Ake and Loda, becoming a stack of four Swedes and one weeb. Despite their success, the team opted to kick Founder Eternal Envy for unknown reasons. Some believe that EE was kicked from the team because he wanted to become a carry rather than a support. Others have, uh, different theories. Hey Bulldog, it's me Slacks. Why did you guys yeah, kick you Eternal know. Envy from no Tide Hunter that I need to? No for a movie I'm making. It wasn't white. Suffice it to say, No Tide Hunter picked up the newcomer EGM in 2013, creating the fabled stack as told in the old Norse legends, the Swede Stack! Two months later, No Tide Hunter was picked up by the GG Corporation to form Team Alliance, and the Swede Stack became the fabled A-Team. They set their sights out for the impossible, to win the International 3. Navi had complete control over the Internationals, winning TI1 and coming in second place at TI2. The community had high hopes for Alliance as they had won several tournaments before the International, but they were still a new team. They would be going up against Dota's most seasoned veterans. It was hard to imagine that they would make it to the finals, but not only did they, they played one of the most heart-stopping matches ever in Dota 2 history. I could tell you about the Million Dollar Dream Coil, I could describe to you the push to end all pushes, but showing you means just so much more. Behold the TI3 final. They know Loda can relocate in. If those TPs get cancelled, if they get caught, they could lose without ever getting to fight. Will S4 be the hero? Will he play that role yet again? They don't have enough but time. S4, oh, S4. cancel TP! He's oh! He cancels the beat from B! Puppy, he's not gonna be back in the face! He's got BKB, but no boots of travel. Oh! Quite a lot too. Cancels yeah, so then these TP as well! They are now huge! Now on the fight, but it's caught! Now if they go for the throne, it could be game! Funix down! Alliance are doing it! They need a little more for those to fall! Throw! It's Jeopardy! There's a glyph! It could be their last stand! Dendi's back, he's gonna try to focus everybody, but there's so much stuff the hitting on the time. throne, there's no more glyph available, down to about half HP, a quarter HP, Alliance surrounding from all sides, BKB, they, they wanna do round. it, they're gonna do it, they're, they're gonna do it, the North. Alliance wins, the they win TI3! Alliance were the kings of Dota only six months after being officially formed. They were the heroes of the common man and the kings of the jungle. But then came the frog. Alliance are many things as a team, confident, risky, and strong pushers. But above all, they're specialists. Alliance is a team that is defined by their favorite hero roster and one that every pro Dota team dreads in the banned pig screen. Alliance's hero pool has not changed very much and despite them being one of the best in the world at their respective heroes, when the nerfs came, they came hard for Team Alliance. Post the 3 after significant nerfs to Nature's Prophet, Lone Druid, and other Alliance staples, the team began to fall to the wade side. Tournament after tournament were lost, and they placed a very underwhelming 12th place at TI4. Hoping for a change with a roster shuffle, EGM moved to Team Tinker and S4 shortly afterwards to Team Secret. The Alliance was broken. The dream seemed dead but they never stopped trying. Loss after loss, the world looked at Alliance like a one-trick pony. People waited for the team to fully disband, but the team just kept going, despite the lacking of any major victories. Some people think that Alliance are like rats, just because their most famous victory was achieved by Rat Dota, slowly nibbling away at towers and objectives until they crumbled. But the truth is, is that Alliance are rats. The kind of rat that sneaks into the ship quietly and unnoticed. The kind of rat that lives for years, hoarding its supplies and binding its time. The kind of rat that comes out of nowhere when no one expects it and with one bite can destroy an entire civilization. Alliance are that rat. They are the plague and they are finally back. As for a return to Alliance after the collapse of TI5's Team Secret, followed by EGM, who came back after semi-successful stints with Team Taker and 4CL. People thought that Alliance was through nonetheless. They thought the dream was long dead, and bringing back the TI3 squad would be a last-ditch attempt before the complete team disband. But they were oh so wrong. 
6.86 arrived and with it minor buffs that brought some of the team's favorite heroes back from the grave. While most attributed the team's victories to their heroes, the truth is the heroes are only half the equation. Each member of the team is almost unquestionably the best player of their respective heroes in the world. Their most successful hero is back in a usable state and their most successful roster back online. Alliance returned to the fray and they came back hard. WCA was our first major victory in a long time despite S4 having what appeared to be a life-threatening disease. At the next major tournament, Star Ladder, the team displayed an incredible dominance, trashing the TI5 winners EG in a 2-0 stomp in the finals and defeating the European team's liquid in secret to the surprise of uh, pretty much everybody. Is Alliance back because their core heroes have returned? Some people seem to think so, but others, myself included, think it's more than just that. Alliance is back because they refuse to ever leave, and their diehard fans never let them go. Alliance came from nothing more than five Swedish boys who wanted to show the world that they could do the impossible. And now, in the team's darkest hour, they are doing the impossible all over again. But can this comeback last all the way to the Shanghai Major? Only time will tell, but let's take a look now at the colorful Swedes that make up the Swedish stack. Loda began his Dota 2 journey back in 2005 under the name of Lord of Dol Amoroth, which is apparently a reference to a feudal principality in the kingdoms of Gondor and Lord of the Rings. That's some serious shit. Anyhow, after having some fun times in Dota 1, he introduced the game to his classmate Ake, and they traveled the world together ride or die style. After several successful endeavors in the Dota world, Loda and Ake were approached by none other than Malk to move to the professional Dota world in his team, Jukes on You which is one of the best team names in history. Lone and Ake eventually parted ways with Malk, but continued a friendly rivalry with him, and their clashes became so epic and crowd-drawing that some attribute the rise of Dota as a eSport in general to those clashes between them. Lone gathered quite a reputation in the Dota 1 days, being called El God by the Chinese and even introducing the global strat to Dota for the first time. Moving on to Dota 2 after years of success, Lone moved from team to team, but never forgot the joys he had during the good old days when he and his Swedish classmates took on the world. On the hunt for an all Swedish stack, once again he came across no Tide Hunter, and the rest became history. After they kicked EE. Loda is known for many things, but he is mostly known for his leadership skills. One of the only members of Alliance who doesn't have a specific hero which he is known for, Loda is versatile, intelligent, and overall known to be a pretty good guy both in-game and out. What makes Loda so liked and respected as a leader is his ability to identify his team's strengths, but more importantly play around their and his own weaknesses. All in all, his die-hard commitment to his team and his fans is why Loda, despite being one of the founding faces of competitive Dota, is still highly regarded as one of the best players in the world today. As Malcolm said in 2008, Loda has great energy in the game and the magical ability to lead his allies into certain death, but will still come out on top. He has a flair for entertaining people and is a great guy online as well as offline. It's Loda's world, we're just lucky to live in it. We've already covered S4 in detail, but it's worth noting where he has been since. Leading up to the International 5, S4 was the star player of Team Secret, securing them several wins before the big tournament took place. However, during TI5, many attributed the loss of Secret to their star player, and the Golden Boy of Secret took harsh criticisms, deserving or not. With the team gutted post-TI, S4 returned to Alliance and plugged away, climbing back to his top spot in the minds of the hearts and people worldwide. It took some time, but once S4 got comfortable, he got to the killing yet again. Regardless as one of the best playmakers in Dota, S4 has returned to his old favorites, Puck and Batrider, and has been playing out of his mind in recent months as the mid-captain and frequently sole initiator of Team Alliance. Is his recent resurgence due to the fire deep within him to show the world that he can win another international? Or is it because he remembers moves like the Million Dollar Dream Coil now that he is back with his old team? Only S4 truly knows, but we as viewers can all see that S4 is hitting all of his shots. The support and utility of the team, Ake is one of the original members of Alliance and has had his fate very much intertwined with his old friend Loda since back in 2005. After being convinced to play Dota by Loda, Ake enjoyed years of success from 2005 to 2008 until his decision came to leave competitive Dota and finish his university studies. Returning to Dota after a brief stint in Han, he competed at TI2 in 2012 under Team CLG, placing a respectable fifth place. Already sponsored because of their countless victories, Ake and Loda began hunting for an all Swedish stack, getting close enough with no Tidehunter, kicking EE, and adding EGM 
in 2013. The duo has remained on the line since its founding ever since. A pro player in both Smash and Dota, Ake has been supporting the carry Loda for around 11 years now, and thus the duo has a synergy that is pretty much unmatched in the Dota 2 scene. While Ake plays a main support, his micro skills and Chen play are what make him a true force to be dealt with. Being the second best Chen in the world, the times when Ake's signature hero is not immediately banned are few and far between, but when he gets his hand on that holy cat man, there's no stopping the relentless, brutal pushing that he can create. If S4 makes the plays and Loda calls the shots, then Ake leads the push. When you are Alliance and you are known world over as one of the most aggressive pushing teams in the game, that certainly means something indeed. AGM, or Enter God Mode as he so subtly named himself, is a hard support of Team Alliance and is one of the most difficult people I have ever had to research in this entire series. I mean, for a guy that plays one of the meanest wisps in the world and can be attributed to game winning play after play, AGM is a pretty soft spoken and humble guy all around. He began his Pro Dota Tour in 2010 after being picked up by Team Druids because of his potential and we liked him. Oh, really? <laughs> wow! He joined Otide Hunter to replace. EE in 2013, only months before the team's incredible TI3 win, and left the team during their hard times post TI4 to try his luck in Team Tinker. Alliance didn't do much without him, and then out of nowhere, EGM returned to Alliance once again, and so did their victories. All in all, EGM is pretty much a mystery. Where he comes from, few know. How he gains his power is out of our comprehension, and the way he shapes the fate of those around him is too subtle to notice. All in all, EGM a wizard! A wizard who needs a goddamn PR department, because it shouldn't be this hard to look up shit about a TI winner, for God's sake. Write a blog or do ask me anything or something, EGM. This shit shouldn't be hard. And finally, Admiral Bulldog. The Dong. Sir Donger of Capaville. Ugh, where to begin? Admiral Bulldog is the perfect esports professional player. I mean, really, that's it. One of the most skilled players in the world, one of the funniest people in Dota, one of the most successful streamers on Twitch, the Dong pretty much has it all. Bulldog is known for his lone druid plays, and that's actually how his story began. After absolutely trashing pro players and high level pups for months with his lone druid, Bulldog was invited to play as a stand in for Navi by none other than Dendi himself. After showing off in Navi, he was asked to join No Tide Hunter by Eternal Envy, and there he met S4, who would be his space creator until this very day. He was known as a huge playmaker in No Tide Hunter, and one of those plays went down in Dota history. You've got to keep your eyes open for that one, and uh, wow, Admiral Bulldog giving a freebie. And here we go. Uh -huh. Game is on. <laughs> the bait there's, is lane. There's a small blood patch where Admiral Bulldog It's a trap. Be. And it is. It's actually a trap because they came to check for it. Now the stun. He goes out of milk. They're going to bring it down. Oh my games. Now on the beat is the Swedes. They pull something out of the bag. And beat is going to go down as well. No one has ever done that. No one has ever done that in the history of Dota. Bulldog stayed with No Tide Hunter slash Alliance for years until the dark time post TI4 where he decided to spend more time with his fans as a full time streamer. When Alliance got back on track, Bulldog was welcomed back with open arms and he is now back where he belongs today. People criticize Bulldog for having a limited hero pool, but the truth is is that he is rather versatile. It's just that he plays those heroes better than anyone else in Dota 2. Famous for his lone druid plays and his trusty bear Alfredo, he has dominated teams with unstoppable nature's prophets, merciless broodmothers, and brutal clockwork plays. But Bulldog is not just a pro player. Known for his suave and irresistible skills with women, Admiral Bulldog is known to woo the hottest starlets in esports for his quest to find love. Ladies man and humanitarian, his his recent work is to spread awareness and befriend disturbed streamers around the world. Casanova, pro player, comedian, and living meme. We are living in the age of the bulldog, and it is to him that we raise our dongers forever. So begins a new chapter for Team Alliance. But will this recent resurgence prove to be their second coming, or will the candle burn brightest before it glows dim for the last time? The world watches in anticipation, and the words are whispered on the lips of every viewer. Is Alliance back? In Shanghai, we will find out. Thank you for watching the Majors down low! If you want to suggest a team or have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. As always, thanks to our crew who helped me with this, Robert Davis, Sun Tzu, and Darklight. Thanks again, and this is Slax. I'll see you at the Majors. Maybe. Probably not for Shanghai. Have a good one.